I am your Raspberry Pi and Linux propagandist for today, and I want to load up Raspberry Pi OS, open up a terminal, and go over some commands I think everybody should know if you're getting to Raspberry Pi OS. Let's get started. So first up, I am going to open up the Raspberry Pi imager. We're going to choose our OS. We're just going to go with the default Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit and our storage device, which is our 32 gig SD card I have plugged in. And we write. If you've got this part down packed and already have your OS loaded up, you can skip this part. If you are new to Raspberry Pi, this is the Raspberry Pi Imager. You can find this on their main site. This is basically the go-to application you want to use to install operating systems onto your SD card that you can then plug into your Raspberry Pi and try out a new operating system. All right, looks like we're done. I can go ahead and remove my SD card and pop it into my Raspberry Pi. All right, so I'm up here now. I've got the Raspberry Pi OS ready and I want to open up the terminal. So you can either click on this little icon up here, which is the terminal icon, but you can also do control alt T. So this is what you'll normally see. As soon as you open up the terminal, you'll see your username at Raspberry Pi. You'll see the dollar sign there. And now what we want to do first is get to root user. Now root user is going to be pretty much the administrator level, right? like if you were equating this to Windows. So to become a root user, you'll just type sudo su dash. And as you can see, our dollar sign has turned into a hashtag or pound sign. And now that signifies that we are the root user. Some commands require you to be root user, especially if they involve very important things like messing with IP addresses, looking at valuable information, it will usually prompt you to be root level user. So the first command I wanna run is if config or if config. If you're a Windows user, You've probably ran IP config to find out what IPs and MAC addresses your machine has. But uh, if config is a Linux equivalent, Raspberry Pi equivalent, we're going to run that now. IF config. So boom, we have our network interfaces, um, but Ethernet obviously is the Ethernet port. That's the MAC address for my Ethernet port. Then we have our wireless LAN zero, which is our Wi-Fi adapter. Um, and that's the MAC address for that one. If we did have an IP address and we're connected to the Internet, um, we would see an IP address here, but as you can see, we don't have any data, no IP for our wireless LAN or our Ethernet. So that shows you that we are completely offline. And the next command I want to run is one that's going to show you some resource monitoring. And that's just called TOP. T-O-P. TOP. And that's gonna show you some useful resource usage, kind of like Task Manager in Windows. Gonna show you CPU, memory, um, if it is a root user or user level, you can see here, pretty simple, straightforward. And we're gonna do Control C to get out of that. Control C is your pretty much go-to command for getting out of a running application like Top that just keeps continuously updating and running. Um, you wanna just do Control C and you'll be back to your command line. Another simple command is just reboot. If you ever want to reboot your Raspberry Pi, you can just simply type reboot. And if you're not logged in as the root user, you will just type sudo reboot. That is one of the commands that I was mentioning before that does require you to be root user. Reboot is one of those. So sudo reboot, or if you already logged in as root, then just reboot. Now the next command is actually a pair of commands. The first part of that pair is apt get update. And that's going to update your software. Now I'm probably not going to, yeah, so I'm not connected to the internet, so it's not gonna run. The next half of that pair is sudo apt get upgrade. And that's gonna do what it sounds like, upgrade your OS. But of course it's going to fail because I'm not connected to the internet. Okay, next command. Let's say you do wanna connect your Raspberry Pi to Wi-Fi. We will get to the Raspberry Pi config by typing sudo if you are not user raspi config like not determine the default user sure okay so we're going to go to system options wireless lan in our ssid all right so i just connected my raspberry pi to wi-fi let's see if it worked if config is going to tell us and my wireless LAN tells me it has an IP address of 192.168.20 and that is the VLAN that I just connected to. So now that we have our Raspberry Pi connected to the internet, we can install some stuff. So if you are a Steam enjoyer like myself, you can actually install Steam Link on the Raspberry Pi and you can just do that by typing apt get dash get install Steam 
link. So you'll actually be able to run your Steam games on your Raspberry Pi if you do have them on the same network. And that's gonna be generally how you'll install applications, apt git install name of your software. So the next command I wanna run is lsusb. Now ls is a Linux command that just means list. It's gonna mean list out all the things in a certain directory. So if we just type ls by itself, we don't get anything here, but let's go to ls. Okay, so if we go to our main directory and type ls, you see all of the main folders that we have where you can get started on finding whatever files you need. Uh, but we won't go too deep into that. That's just what the ls command does. But if we combine it with other things like lsusb, it'll list our USB devices. Before I get to my last command, if you are still looking for a Raspberry Pi right now and are having trouble finding one in stock, I did just make a video that I'll link here to help you track stock on Raspberry Pis right now. Now the last command is gonna be our shutdown command. But not just shutdown, I'm gonna delay it by a little bit. So I'm gonna delay it by typing space dash R one. So as you can see here, my shutdown is now scheduled for one minute in advance. Now, obviously you can change that number at however many minutes you want, but if you do have like some software that's running, something that you just want to uh, time to shut down, if you are maybe watching a movie or something and you just want it to shut down um, after that movie is over, two hours or something like that, you can do the scheduled shutdown. But that's pretty much it. Peace.